Now we'll talk about shutter, which is how long you let light into the camera, essentially. And just before I go on to shutter, I'll have a quick check of the chat just to make sure there's no questions. Looks OK so far. So if we have a fast shutter, shutter time, it's the least time opened, and it's measured in fractions of a second. So it could be hundredths, or it could be thousandths. Um, on some cameras, it could even be 10 thousandths, but they tend to be fairly specialized. If we are talking about a slow shutter, then that's more time that the shutter is open, and it tends to be measured in seconds. You normally use a slow shutter speed when you want to blur things, or it's dark, and you need to capture a scene, whereas if most of our shots are going to fit into the fast category. The faster the shutter, the better it is at stopping motion. So if you want no blur at all in an image, you need a very fast shutter. As a general rule of thumb, and this one's a little bit inaccurate, but it'll probably work for you, at least two times the focal length of your lens. So on my camera that you can see behind me, that's a 12 to 100. Um, I try to shoot about 1 200th or better to try and keep the, the images sharp. So let's talk about slow first. So we're doing a very long exposure. This is a ride at an amusement park. Um, the night was raining, which is why you can see some little spots on there. This is a 30 second exposure. So it's covered several revolutions of the ride. It's a, a great thing to use at nighttime because you can really pick up your surroundings and you can capture movement and action. You need to support your camera. So you'll notice that in the image, the things like the, the rock walls around the ticket box and the fence and the little buildings and things, they're all quite sharp because then I'm not moving around. So they're staying still. Now, interestingly, people who are moving disappear. If you look in the bottom right hand side of that image, you can see three or four people standing at a, a little concession box there. But the other people that have been walking back and forth in front of me, you'd never know they were there because they just don't register when you're exposing for this long which is really good if you're trying to get people out of the picture, which you want to do sometimes as a local guide. So if we have a slow or a long exposure, this one again is 30 seconds, and I've used this one in light painting. So in this one, there's some steel wool spinning in a little cage. It gives you a fairly dramatic image, and it's kind of cool. Just managed to realize I can pin the presentation, so now it'll probably record it properly. That's handy. Um, I've got a little comment down the bottom of that slide, don't be Barry. This is something that's in my local ph photography group. Uh, we had a, an outing once where someone got in the way of a shot and someone yelled out, for fuck's sake, Barry. So from then on, anybody that gets in the way is a Barry. And you'll notice there's a Barry in this image. And because it was dark when I started exposing the image, I didn't actually know they were there. I didn't realize till later. Life's like that. So the other thing that it's useful for in long exposures, this is the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, I did this in 2018 at Local Guides Connect when it was in San Francisco before it moved to San Jose last year. And this is done with a device with some colored LED lights that change color as you move them. And it was done with the help of a few other local guides. So essentially, you just write in the air backwards with this thing, and, and it records all of the image. But you need to do a long exposure for this, because it took quite a while. Now, between fast and slow shutters, there's one I'm going to call medium, just for want of a better word. And this is around two to four seconds. It's useful in daytime, and it's for capturing movement blur deliberately. Just let someone else in if I can make my mouse work. I cannot. Okay, let's just go back in the slides. Sorry about that, folks.
Okay, back to this one. So it's useful in daytime. We're capturing movement deliberately. And this is a handheld one by panning the camera. And what I mean by panning the camera is if you take the camera, you point it at your subject and you follow your subject along. So as the motorbike went across the road, I'm just following the motorbike, which means that after you've practiced the technique for a while, the thing that's moving will stay relatively sharp and in focus, but the background becomes really, really blurred. And it's just a cool way of showing things that are moving. It's just a nice way of doing it. Now, if you've got a short shutter speed, sorry, Ananda, I probably should have asked you if I could use this photo, but I didn't. So if you've got a really short shutter speed, this one is 1 640th of one second and it's capturing a moment where Hernandez pretending to eat a fruit. It's in daytime, it stops the movement completely, it's handheld, and the model is Ananda. Um, one thing I do want to draw your attention to on this photo, uh, Maria's asked, is that a tennis ball? <laughs> no, it's not, it's a piece of fruit. We found it at the Hyde Gallery. Um, one thing I want to draw your attention to is the focus is on Ananda's eyes. So that's the sharpest point in this image. And everything else is a little bit off that. Now, when I shoot people, I usually focus on their eyes.